Padres, last year at Elsinore, everybody always talked about not getting to San Diego, because that was kind of like way out there. But let's get to El Paso. That's where you want to be. So I'm here. I'm excited. The ballpark is unbelievable. Um, it's. I spent my last three years, not, my last three years in the big leagues coaching in Chicago. And as great a city as that is in Wrigley Field, I think I made it to the big leagues now. <laughs> in this place. Because Wrigley needs some work. But, uh, <laughs> um, no, it's. It's, it's a fun day for me, uh, no matter how long you've been in the game. Uh, when you're in the minor leagues and player development, you're always striving to get back to the major leagues, and you have to take your, your road ahead of you and piece by piece, and this is one of the pieces players are trying to get there, and believe it or not, managers and coaches are on that same path. So uh, uh, excited to get to the AAA level. Uh, brand of baseball is excellent. Um, you look at the players on the field and both teams, everywhere you play, uh, most of three quarters of the rosters are guys that have been in the major leagues, so the talent level is excellent. That's fun to watch and it's fun to compete against and, and fun to manage against. So um, with that, I'll leave it open to questions. You can ask me whatever you want, And but I am thrilled to be here. and. Uh, to be the second manager in Chihuahua history. Question? What was your uh, initial, uh, I guess, perception of El Paso? I'm sure you've been here uh, beforehand, but when you first got here most recently, what was your just, uh, perception of the city? Well, I got here most re recently at 3 a.m. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, El Paso's been a baseball town. It's been a minor league city forever. And uh, very well respected. Uh, it's one of those cities that you say, you know, I, I will say along with San Antonio, where I came from, um, uh, it's been a minor league city forever. And based, you, you think baseball when you relate to El Paso. Um, so uh, if that ask, answers your question, I think of baseball when, when I think of El Paso. What are the last 48 hours been like for you? I mean, obviously with, with Pat moving up and there was some uncertainty of manager. When, when, when did you find out when you uh, that you got the call and then you're you're suddenly you're an Albuquerque? I mean, what did the last 48 hours been like? Um, we were. I was in San Antonio uh, getting ready. It was about 3:30 uh, two days ago. So what is today? I, I don't even know. What it is. <laughs> Thursday. It's Thursday. So it was Tuesday. Uh, I was sitting in my desk in the locker room, the clubhouse in San Antonio, figuring out a lineup and how we're going to beat Corpus Christi. And Sam Ganey, our uh, director, called and uh, started the pieces in motion and told me and asked me if I would want to do it, um, that they would want me to do it. And I said, absolutely. And let me get some things in order because it was happening so fast. He says, I'll get back to you. And, 45 minutes, and uh, that's how it all went. You know, pieces were moving. I had, I came here, they had to move somebody into San Antonio, and uh, so it was all the same reaction. So I found out about Thursday, like 3 30 at the ballpark. And, uh, you know, we knew obviously Murph, which was awesome. You know, you, you like to see promotion from within. And, uh, and I will say it was. It was a happy day and a sad day because Buddy Black's a very good friend of mine. So um, Murph got his opportunity, but then you get the chain reaction going and, and, and all that. But uh, so it was kind of a whirlwind. I, it was more so for my wife and me. We both flew out of San Antonio. I was flying to Albuquerque, and she was going to just come here and be here yesterday. And the weather grabbed her, which you can't control that and she ended up spending the night in Dallas and got in here this morning. So that's what you do in baseball. You're, you're ready to go at the drop of a hat and ready to move on and keep, keep moving and no moss grows on your shoes. Welcome to Paso. I'm just wondering what you feel is special about this ballpark. Well, I, obviously I had to go out and look at it when I got here and just try to get my bearings. and. Uh, First thing I noticed was the, I don't know the groundkeeper's name, but I haven't met him. Andy Banks. Andy Banks. He, he 
had a steamroller going and leveling the field and all that. And I thought, wow, you, know, you don't see that at minor league ballparks. Just the attention to detail that he's doing out there, and uh, you know, you, you'll see that. You don't even see that on, on a day game of a major league park, let alone a minor league park. But he he got my attention. Uh, how well manicured it is, and how beautiful it is, and uh, it just—it just looks like it fits in this acreage, whatever this size of acreage is. It's very well designed and planned, and the playing surface looks beautiful. You were with the uh, minor league spring training. Uh, just kind of talk about your familiarity with the roster and uh, how you feel setting up lineups now. Uh, very familiar, because I was in major league camp, and shoot, I think '95. 98% of these guys were in Major League Camp, so I, I have touched every one of them at some point, somehow know, know them very well, familiar with all of them. So that part of it's very easy. Uh, as an organization, you do follow ball, you know, box scores, but uh, more, more than that is, I, 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 know them, I, I know them all, I've been around them all through spring, and you know, that, so that, that part is a very easy transition. <coughs> Skip, can you talk about balancing player development um, with obviously winning and losing, and how you view that? Um, I think both are very important, um, and I had this conversation with our player development people, and uh, I think that's one reason why why I am around is uh, developing a player is absolute critical. That's what the number one goal is. But if there is a one A goal. It's, it's teaching them how to win also. And uh, I've been fortunate to be on a lot of very good teams over, over my career, and, uh, and I stress winning. Um, I don't think you're gonna see me pull a guy to pinch hit him. Uh, if I think, you know, if it's a major league quality roster guy, um, you know, he has precedent, and he has to be in those situations to succeed or fail, or make a pitch with the bases loaded. Um, I'm not going to go get a take a guy out in those situations. They need to experience those situations. It might it might mean winning a game that night, but it, his development comes first. But at the same time, you are learning how to win games, and you will learn how to win games if you're in those situations and succeed in those situations. 